Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about security. Um, unfortunately, this night there were some uh, events in Paris that uh, basically shook the whole world. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are go to the victims of the attacks. Uh, and again, it's also another sign why security is important. Uh, these unfortunate events, and I hope this is probably, hopefully, the last uh, bit that we see of it. Uh, but these things are also th happening on the internet. Basically, on a daily basis, we have like massive attacks on our systems, whether or not we know it. And yeah, we n need to pay attention to all of this. So, uh, about two years ago, I had a colleague of mine. He says, "Hey, you know what?" Uh, have a look at this. So he sent me a link, and when I opened the link, I was like, are you really serious about this? What was the, the link all about? It was on GitHub. Extension PHP, MySQL query, dollar underscore get. OK, you guys are reacting the same way I was. So. I was about, let's, let's work on this. Uh, let's uh, do some promotion about, uh, hey, best practices, don't use MySQL query, and don't use get inside that query. Uh, validate your data, validate your input. So a year later, from 99,000 to 200,000. So this morning, I took a look. 352,000 and counting. If you look tomorrow, it probably will be 370. And it will continue. We need to do something about this. Because, let's be honest, this is dangerous. This is really, really bad thing happening. And I have this feeling that even though I do all this promotion at conferences, at user group meetings, I feel like I'm building the uh, cathedral in, in Barcelona, a never-ending story. Well, well, yeah, but it's still a work in progress for a couple of centuries. And I think I, I will be doing this as well, working on this for a couple of centuries. Why should we bother? Why should we care about security? Well, you have newspapers, and in the news, I see on a daily basis, site got hacked, security breach, data stolen. I mean, guys, come on. We can do better than this. I don't want to see any of your companies being in one of these newspapers. And don't go like, oh, it won't happen to me. Yes, you are a target. Because you might not be a big one. You might not be a very huge corporation that spans over multiple uh, countries. You might be just a sole provider to one of these big companies. You might be working for Nike. You might be working for Adobe. I, I don't care. But you as a small company, you don't have the financial resources to invest in security, like the major ones. But you do have access to the VPN. You do have access to their system because you need to build something on that. That makes you a potential target. You are the small fish that hackers want because through you, they can get, get access to bigger fish. And what are they about? They want email. Who hasn't received a promotion for Viagra. Okay. Uh, insurances. Life insurances. Software that will help you clean up your computer. <laughs> and install malware at the same time. I mean, this, these are the things that you will get on a daily basis. These are spammers that will pay huge amounts of money for actual active email addresses. Why? Because if they send like 10 million emails out, they only need to have one or two people accepting it. 
and that will cover all their expenses. So 10 million emails go out, only one or two need to reply. In theory, or in practice, we will see that at least 50, 100 people will say, hey, yeah, I, I would like that. So they already make a fortune just by sending out emails. Who uses Google in this room? Google Mail, Google Drive, okay. Um, who uses Facebook? Okay, still a lot. Uh, anyone on Twitter? Okay, well, not so much. But what I see a lot is we have passwords and we use a password here. Use the same passwords at Stripe for our payments. We use uh, it also on our Google. And why not on Evernote? So people are using one username and one password all over these sites. If one of these sites got hacked and people have access to your uh, and don't say it won't happen, it even happened to me. If you have one password for all these accounts, they got all your information. Because, yeah, it's only a script that will be executed. So, you will get hacked, and then you go like, hey, how is this possible? I protect my, my stuff. I have antivirus on my computer. Why is it happening to me? It's not happening to you. It's because one of these sites got hacked, and they have taken all your data. A, lot, a, last, um, a few months ago, I went to a government site, and I registered, because that was for uh, yeah, open biddings on, on projects. And uh, they sent me a password, a small password, six characters, randomly chosen. And when I said, OK, I forgot my password, I got the same password again. <laughs> so in other words, this government agency stores passwords in plain text in their database. And it's not the only case that I've witnessed. A lot of people still do that. If you guys are doing it, I can tell you, you're doing it wrong. There is a PHP function uh, created by Anthony Ferreira. Password hash, use it. I mean, that's the least you can do. Has all your passwords. It should not be in clear text. Because, yeah, I can just take it out of a database somewhere and log into your account, take all your money, hack all your friends, or hack all your friends, and, and you will be screwed. There are some nice tools out there called password managers. LastPass, 1Password, RoboForm. If you don't have one of these already, go get one of these. LastPass is already taken by another company, but 1Password, uh, I, I use 1Password, I love it. Uh, RoboForm, they're all working in the same way. It's encrypted on your own system, and you can have multiple vaults, so you can actually have team collaboration on your uh, passwords. But use these, so you only have to remember one password that will open up the world to you for all the other sites. And now you, you just generate passwords for every site, and every six months you go, oh, I get uh, an old password, let's renew it. It's no more a pain to do so. You can generate passwords up to 50 characters, make it randomly with characters and uh, letters and numbers all together. Works perfect. Who uses two-factor authentication? All right, people that don't raise their hands, use it. No, seriously. Two-factor authentication is an additional step in your security. You guys are professionals. You need to be professional at security. Security with two-factor authentication, you log in from an unknown origin, 
it pops up. Hey, please uh, authorize this. Over here, I'm here in Poland. I get this notification for Google. I get this notification for GitHub. At least I know that my stuff is secured. If you provide services, authentication services to your customers, implementation of two-factor authentication is easy. Even if your customer is not the primary security-minded uh, uh, yeah, user base, offer it because more and more people will be using it. And if you say, okay, we still have a customer base that is technically challenging, uh, send out an SMS. This is your code. Just make sure that you have all the information. Marketing-wise, this is a good idea because now you on, don't only have an email address, but you also have a phone number. So you can uh, even get like phone numbers from your customers. But use a secondary verification. So we talk about, OK, how we prevent this. But maybe it's also good to know to understand who is behind all this. Who's after my data? First of all, script kiddies. This is my son. If you can not see it in the back, this is a Linux uh, desktop. Yes, my kid was already hacking away when he was three years old. Can you imagine? He's seven right now. <laughs> I'm scared shitless at home. <laughs> yeah, he already bypassed the, 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 the firewall, so can it, you can imagine what you can do next, right? So this is the first level of hackers that you have to deal with. They download tools from the internet, they run it, and if they succeed hacking your application, maybe it's time to look for another job because this is not your, your thing. I mean, these are the kids, these are the hackers you want to keep out of your system. These are generally available tools that they use, so even you as a developer can use them as well and test them on your own applications. <coughs> you should be able to keep them out. The next level are amateur hackers. So after this talk, I hope to see all of you becoming this guy. You need to be able to hack your own system. You need to understand what the mindset is of a hacker. Hackers, they think out of the box. You as a developer, you have a clear focus these are the functionality that I need to provide, and you provide it. A hacker looks like, okay, this is an email. What happens if I have this raw DVD data and I dump it in your form? What happens then? Or, hey, let's, I've got this little SQL exploit. Let's uh, binary encode this and put this in your form. What happens then? Hackers think a little bit different than normal developers. They are looking for ways to break stuff. And you, as professional developers, should become more and more the hacking mentality, how do I break stuff? Only when you break it, you can fix it. Business competition. They want your secret sauce. <coughs> I was at several companies in a high competitive market. And yes, we had these competitors trying to slurp our data. First, they did like web scraping, capture all our public available data. And then we saw that they were trying to do a little bit more, like specific AJAX calls, trying to figure out how they could access the raw data instead of scraping the websites. So you need to be aware that your competition, if they see that you are gaining market share and they're losing it, they might want to check out your customer base. They want to know what is your secret sauce. Why are you winning and not them? Most of the time your competition will hire 
will not have the, the, the knowledge, so they call these guys professional hackers. I can tell you right now, you as developers cannot stop these guys. If someone here in the room can guarantee me 100% security, I call him a flat out liar. There's no such thing. These guys know how to break stuff. And they think about things in your system that you have no clue ever existed. I've seen people that sent UDP messages straight into a kernel system and got a meltdown and gained access. I've seen weird stuff going on. These hackers, you cannot stop them. But what you can do is make it harder for them to enter your system. Make sure that if a competitor hires them, it will cost them money. Let's say that this hacker charges like 1,500 uh, euros uh, an hour. Well, make sure that he spends about a week trying to get into your system. So it, it is at least, yeah, a costly affair for your competition. So you cannot stop these guys. And you certainly cannot stop governments. One thing a government has and nobody else has, endless amount of money. If it takes a year for a ha professional hacker to your access your system, a government doesn't care. If they want to know your data, they're going to get it. And if they cannot have one hacker infiltrating your uh, system, they will get two or 10 or 50, just as much as it needs to hack into your system. And yes, I was at one of the companies that was hacked by a government. And I can tell you, that's not fun. So, what can you do against all of this? Like I said, I cannot guarantee 100% security, but you do can do a lot yourself. First of all, we need to know about cultural differences. You're, you guys are a part of Europe, so you are a bit to the European law. There are some legal regulations in charge. So, when you have privacy data, let's see, you sir with uh, striped shirts, what do you, no, you, you're looking, yes. What do you consider privacy data? What do you consider private data? Okay. You, sir. What do you consider private data? Yeah. So, so private data is all kinds of data that can link that particular information to a single person. A name, email address, home address, phone number. I mean, I'm storing this. Who else? Come on. It has to be more than that. Anyway, if you store this data, this is already what we consider under European law, privacy data. This is something you need to be able to protect. You can separate email and uh, password from the rest of the information and have like encrypted linkage. Or if you store it, you need to store it encrypted on your hard drive or in your database. Who uses encryption to store data? Okay, so maybe it would be nice that everyone else that didn't raise their hand talk to the guys that raised their hand to know how to do it. Because it is the law. It might be different here in Poland, might be different in Germany, might be different in Belgium where I come from. 
But European law says privacy data needs to be protected and needs to be encrypted. One other thing, maybe you don't know, but if privacy is violated, you are being hacked. Are you aware that you need to report this breach to the government? If not, now consider yourself informed. There are also architectural considerations. Any architecture that you choose has a major impact on <coughs> how to protect yourself. We had a discussion yesterday evening about build your own framework to understand what's going on underneath it and then throw it away, remember? Okay. If you do that and you have a homegrown framework in production, it will be a challenge to maintain it and secure it. Because every single day there is something new that comes out as a potential threat. So if you have that homegrown thing, maybe it's time to consider to use a open source framework. Symfony, Sam Framework, Aura, Laravel, I don't care. But use something that is supported by the community because the community reacts a lot faster on security issues than you and your team, even though, let's say that you have 1,500 developers in your team. It's still be, uh, not enough, considering the thousands of developers contributing to the open source uh, projects. Who has a team more than 1,000? OK, I rest my case. Um, who has? Servers on premises. Okay. So everyone else is using cloud or hosted services. Good. Um, I went to a couple of companies with service on prem, and that's the door, and the door was wide open the whole day. People walked in. Racks weren't locked. So I all I have to do is take a use drive with malware on it, plug it in, and I had full access. And I see people nodding their head like, how is this possible? Yes, it is possible. It is the world that we live in. IT managers are sometimes neglectable on these things. If you have a data center or you have service on-prem, lock it down. Make sure that nobody can access it without being tagged, locked, even uh, double checked. So, physical access restriction is the primary key. Secure ne your network. If you have your servers hosted somewhere, <coughs> is this an access you have over the internet or through VPN? Who uses a VPN to connect to their hosted services? Okay, that's about a third of this room. Everyone else, get working on that. No, seriously, if you have like just plain internet access to that hosted service, um, chances are that at the hosted service, a maintainer says, oh, I'm a little bit bored. Nobody's calling in for support. Let's see what's going on on our network. They can see all the traffic. I know, I worked at a hosting company myself. Uh, when you have clouds, Amazon, Azure, Rackspace, DigitalOcean, uh, it is public internet. But they have this option, VPN. Use VPN for your communication from your company. Make it more secure. Because everyone else on the internet can just see what's going on. If it's competition, they see, oh, there's a whole bunch of data passing by. They don't even have to see your, your code. They don't have to see what's being updated. They just see, oh, there is a new release coming up. So we need to act upon that. 
Remember that story about the NSA that they're just after your metadata? Metadata is really valuable because it will give a lot more information about what's going on than seeing the code passing by. Be aware of that. Take extra care for privacy data. We already discussed this. It's a European law. We need to protect this. Use encryption as much as possible. SSH. I hopefully everyone uses SSH for their communication and not telnets. <laughs> okay, you guys are laughing? I've seen telnet FTP being used all the time, unsecured, unencrypted. No, about two weeks ago. So everyone that's laughing, it's happening in the real world. People are still using unencrypted uh, channels to, to update their servers. GPG keys. OK, everyone else, have a look at it. If I want to send my pa uh, uh, server passwords to the developers, I encrypt those. Here's the information. And you and you, you work on my team. You need to have that information. I encrypt it only for you guys. So you might receive that email as well, or it's been forwarded, but you cannot open it. It's that simple. Use encryption on all sensitive information. Passwords, maybe ports, maybe configuration settings. All these things should be encrypted and stored in your system. Whenever something happens, you need to be able to lock down your application. If a user, let's say you have an e-commerce site and someone has administrative rights and can adjust prices. If someone got access to that password, are you able to lock down the application so that user cannot no longer log in? Have you this kind of facility? Do you have a dashboard that uh, can individually pick out people currently online and say, log out and block? I mean, we're all developers. It's not that hard to implement. But you have to implement it. Create security checkpoints at each phase of usage of your application. You need to be able to know what's going on. These checkpoints are the same thing like with borders. If you go from here to, let's say, Russia, it's not like you can drive just through. No, you've passed a border. It's a checkpoint. They want to know who's coming in, and they want to know what are you doing there. Same thing with your application. You have access control lists, roles. A normal user should not have administrative access. But do you know that that user is trying to get administrative access? Are you aware of these kind of things? You need to be aware of, put these checkpoints in. And automatically, with these checkpoints, you can movements. So if you have an application that's being used primarily between, let's say, 9 in the morning and 6 in the afternoon, and you see activity at 2 in the morning, something's fishy. Or you see, all of a sudden, a spike in traffic on your network, which is normally not the, 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 the amount of traffic that you will get at that point in time. Do you have this kind of information? Do you have these dashboards? I mean, you can get screens at uh, these uh, retail shops for, let's say, 200 euros. Put them in your office. You can create nice dashboards with tools online that will generate graphs. Have that information in your office, so at least you know something is going on. And put thresholds. If it drops below a threshold, you get notified. Use Slack, WhatsApp, SMS, whatever. 
Also for your upper range, if something goes beyond over a certain threshold, get a notification. Get involved with what's happening on your system. And once you have all this, we come to this, the code, your stuff. Uh, who has peer reviews on the code? So what does it mean? Peer reviews means that you write your code and before it gets into production, it, all your changes are being monitored by someone else on the team. This is a secondary validation that the stuff that you're doing is OK. Yes, it will conflict with time. Because everyone is very busy. Everything needs to be done yesterday. I understand this. But if someone has a bad day, couldn't sleep, or had trouble at home, marriage gone down the drain, or whatever. I mean, the life happens. So a developer is not really on to par uh, the next day at the office. Having someone else looking over his code might expose things that I would call failures or security issues. So everyone else. Yeah, start having a secondary opinion on your code. Because security is not an afterthought. You cannot implement security when everything is already shipped. Security has to start immediately. Everything that you do, every line of code that you write, you have to think of how can this be exploited. And I normally talk about testing, and I always hear, yeah, we don't have time and budget for it. Um, the implica implications of being hacked are even worse than something breaking down. Because that Im immediately impacts brands. You might have to deal with uh, financial uh, consequences, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you write code with security in mind. Because we all know this, little lobby tables, right? So SQL injection is still the number one way to get hacked. As we saw, it's not that difficult because we have now 335k examples on GitHub that will just use a GET request in the MySQL query. Little Bobby tables, and this is a very old one, I think four or five years old, and people still haven't learned it. So put this in your office, print it out, put it in your office, let people, developers, know these things happen on a daily basis, multiple times. And always sanitize your data. Filter var. If you don't use a framework, at least use filter var. It's a PHP core functionality to filter and sanitize your data. When we discussed this yesterday, it is something that was mentioned like, hey, this is an underappreciated function. Yes, it is. You can use it for all kinds of things, and you don't need a framework for it. Filter your inputs. Escape your output. That is everything you need to know as a developer. And always make sure that you have like prepared statements. Don't put get request in there, but have it being prepared so you can bind the parameters to those placeholders. And why am I saying this? I work for an automation company. We did license plate recognition. This is a license plate. For those in the back, this is SQL query injection. <laughs> We're talking about cameras. Did it work? It worked. <laughs> it worked. Because 
The camera takes picture of the license plate, processes it with OCR, out comes string. This string is executable SQL injection. Therefore, it was injection inside the database. So any form of data that you haven't written yourself, that you have no control over, consider it bad, consider it evil, consider it tainted. Use the right tool for the job. MySQL query ain't the right tool anymore. If you use PHP 7, you don't have to worry, it's left out. It's not even a problem anymore. Everyone's still using MySQL query, it's time to upgrade. We don't live in the Stone Ages anymore. If you have the opportunity, convert things to data objects. PDO gets a lot more traction. You have a lot more options, a lot more functionality that you can do with data objects in consideration to the native MySQL uh, drivers. I recently, well, in September, I wrote a blog post about speeding up your database queries using iterators. A very simple example using PDO. And let's be honest, if you have a data set of 250,000 records, and if you process it in a regular way, it takes, uh, let's say, about 700 uh, megabytes of memory. When you do it with uh, PDO and iterators, you reduce it to 0 0.25 megabytes of memory. So even if it's not for the performance, use it for the uh, gain on memory usage. And if you have a lot of data to process, it can be a very good ally. And then, once you have the tools in place, you need to layer your security. And you all know this. Authentication, authorization. Put checkbooks, uh, checkpoints in your code. Have logging in there. Track your users. What's going and all I'm saying is, hey, we all know this. I haven't seen it a lot for the customers I work for, unfortunately. And some of them were victims of an attack. They got hacked. The biggest problem is you need to know that you have been hacked. If you don't have these tools in place, these monitoring tools or these notification providers, you don't even know that your system is hacked. And hackers can sit on your system for months, maybe even years, and you have no clue. So knowledge is the first step. And then, once you know it, you go down the shame lane. You need to inform the whole world. And here in Europe, there's this regulation. You need to inform the governments. Um, my advice is, if you have been hacked, be very public about it. Because if customers find out through media that you have been hacked, it's a lot worse, because then you will do brand damage control. If you've been hacked, don't try to solve it yourself. Get security advisors on board. Yes, they will cost a fortune. Yes, they cannot prevent this bad stuff from happening. They can only make sure that you collect the necessary information. So in the case that police has figured out who did it, you can build a very strong case against that person. But you need to have security advisors. Um, Oh, by the way, this is a nice quote. Um, finds up to 5% of the global annual revenue if your uh, site has been hacked and you haven't reported it to the government. I'm just saying, just to be aware of this. Um, P2 
PHP Fog was hacked a couple of years ago, and the CEO was very public about it. He could not undo what was happening. The only thing he could do is inform the world what <coughs> happened, how they did it, so others could learn from it. Once you are being hacked, yes, you have to deal with that. But you can help others in fight against hacking. Let others learn from the failures that happen to you. I know it's, it's never easy to say, hey, we screwed up. Yes, our, your data is now in the hands of who, el who knows. But this is how it all went down. This is what we figured out that we forgot to read these articles. As a developer, it will give you also a complete insight in the way of thinking of hackers. Because this hack was, by pure coincidence, a hack in something that they were planning to secure in the upcoming months. But the hackers were first. They discovered a flaw and they used it. So, inform the world. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to act as a professional, be more security aware in the stuff that you're doing. And I share this uh, presentation as Creative Commons. Spread the word. Take this presentation, take it to your customers, take it to your bosses, take it to your teammates. Inform them. Because it has to be an awareness for everyone. And if you work on projects, comment on bad practices. If you see something that might be a security flaw, point it out. Don't say, hey, this is wrong. Explain also why it's wrong and how they can do it better. Educate the junior developers amongst us. Make them more aware of all these bad practices and how they can improve those. Because at all, we're professionals and we all have to learn from each other. <coughs> Also, learn about the risks. The OWASP, it's an open web application security project. It's a community dedicated for security matters for web applications. I suspect everyone in this room is building an application on web technology. So, this is for you guys. If you haven't bookmarked it, it's time to do so. If you have some time at home and there is another episode of X Factor or Poland Got Talent, maybe it's time to go hack me. It's an online tutorial to give you the basics of hacking and you can start off with the simplest challenges and grow in your knowledge to become a more professional hacker. It's right there. It's there for you to try out and understand the mindsets hackers use to infiltrate into your system so you will, can be more aware of the defenses against those hackers. There's a hack cheat sheet. You gotta love this. I've got it bookmarked because I can use SQL injection codes and I can encrypt it or I can hexadecimal it or I can binary encode it and I can just put it in a form and nine times out of ten it is operational execution of SQL injection even on big sites even on financial sites even on medical sites even on government sites use Exploits that are being exposed, use them in your unit tests. Again, I'm a tester guy. 
we use continuous integration every time there is a new form of hacking or what we see in our web logs we copy paste this and put it in our test we have a data provider so it will continuously test this and we add more and more and more to it easiest way to continuously verify that you are secure resources Chris uh, Corner has uh, created securing PHP he wrote a couple of books on it I can really really recommend it as additional information to how to protect your applications against hacking he also built the PHP security checker it's available on github it is still in beta but at least you can check your security implications in your code essential PHP security by Chris Shiflett written in 2005 updated in 2007 uh, still valid points in there even though for PHP 7 he's still referring to MySQL uh, uh, base commands and uh, driver commands so it will be probably outdated but it's a still good uh, reference when dealing with security in your PHP applications is there anyone in the room processing credit card payments or financial elements okay this is snipey head uh, Allison I cannot pronounce her last name uh, she has this risk matrix she's a checklist you can do to verify if you have security measures into account when you're processing financial information if you're not processing information that's sensitive it's still a good thing to verify how your procedures are <coughs> so the link will be available in the slide and yeah security comes as a mindset you need to I write codes I secure my codes I test my codes I write the documentation for my code that is your job if your manager says write code not the, test, not the security not the documentation <sighs> yeah your manager might as well do your job because he knows it better than you do you are the professional you are being paid to be a professional being a professional also means test your codes and secure your code are there questions Wow no one well in that case may the force be with you uh, if you have info, uh, re questions regarding this you can contact me uh, this is my company we do consulting training quality assurance stuff uh, a shameless plug for our conference in January uh, it's in Antwerp it, uh, we have casino bumper cards a surf simulator so we are a PHP conference with extras so please rate my talk on joined in if you like my talk thank you if you didn't like it let me know how I can improve it the slides the link to my slides is on joined in so you can grab the slides immediately the moment that you leave some feedback so that would be awesome if you do that right after this session uh, and again it's creative commons so share it with your teams with your managers with your customers whoever you think might have value on this because I want to see that number drop on github and not rise any further help me gain that goal thank you have a great conference <laughs>